Hey y'all, happy Monday. So I'm gonna do something different this time and start with the better Bravo show on Sunday nights. This is my review for Married to Medicine, episode six. After last week's funeral episode, I am clocked the F in, and I heard that Quad only has two more episodes left. Uh, let's get into it. But first. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I already told y'all what it is, so y'all should expect it. So we open with our usual montage of what the ladies are doing. And next we get the core four, Jackie, Simone, Heavenly, and Toya, all meeting up for lunch. So Toya will be organizing the group trip to Napa. And being that Toya is now in the wine business, you know, she thought it'd be a great idea to introduce the ladies to that. Now, I think it's a perfect trip, and I went to Napa, uh... Was it earlier this year? I think I did go earlier this year with friends. It is so fun, y'all. If you have a plan on going, make sure you go to the Black Hole Winery. It's called Brown Estates. They have the best rosé I've ever had in my life. Now, not only is Toya discussing Napa, but she also wanted to call a meeting of the minds about Miss Quad and, you know, her going on this trip. She doesn't want it to happen. Toya says there's going to be VPs. I think she's going to be trying to get a deal with Kendall Jackson. And she doesn't feel comfortable with Quad going. So then she brings up the funeral fiasco as an example that Quad didn't give no apology. And she's right. Quad has not taken no accountability. And she doesn't hang with these ladies outside of filming. We cut to Simone's confessional and she says that event left a bad taste in her mouth. Like, who is Quad to say, oh, well, I'm going to wipe the slate clean for all the things y'all done to me? No accountability on her part whatsoever. I don't blame any of these ladies for not wanting her there. We then get Toya's perspective on things and, you know, we get a greatest hits of Quad versus Toya. Like, they've been at it for so long. Child, even Dr. Heavenly's making sense. And when I agree with her, you know you wrong. So of course, Heavenly is one of the ladies who is Quad's extension into the group. But Heavenly says, like, even from my end, like when she gets into new situations or meet other people, she abandons the friendship with the other ladies, i.e. sister circle. I bet the ladies are trying their best not to break the fourth wall while they're on camera, but that's what it is. I, I remember Quad has abandoned this group not once, but twice. Like, Sister Circle, you would have thought she was on The View. Like, she was ready to, like, you know, leave these ladies in the dust. But all that changed once that Okie Doke show got canceled. Okay, so Toya is inviting Quad to Napa. And I'm guessing this is a test of accountability. And if Quad can't accept that, then they're just going to vote her out the group? I'm guessing they did the same thing for Mariah, ironically. Toya sees it as an opportunity for Quad to be a sister to the group. And I'm guess judging by present day, she failed. So then we see all the ladies are in agreement. The plan is activated. And they even call themselves the core four. So next scene, we're with Dr. Demon, the dentist, in her household. She's talking to her daughter about colleges. And she's like, well, so you're going to Clark or Spelman or Georgia State? You're not going to FAMU. <laughs> But her daughter looks like already made up her mind. She already got her FAMU jacket on. She shows Heavenly her college acceptance letter. And it's a done deal. But Heavenly is very sad about this. But she does accept the fact that her daughter is going. I do think it's wild that Heavenly's alma mater is FAMU. Yet she didn't want her daughter to go just so she could be closer to her. Like, it's only one state away. Be lucky she didn't want to go to UCLA or NYU. So next scene with Simone and her family, her sons and Cecil, they're looking at apartments because she's getting those two boys out of her goddamn house. She is expediting the process. She says she wants it back to the old days where it was just her and Cecil in the house. How lucky her sons have it. And wait a minute, she's not getting them an apartment to rent. She's looking to buy the apartment. Wow, okay, look, the privilege. They, they, these boys got it good. Simone is an amazing mom. All right for this boss move, turn it into an investment property. I see you, Simone. Ooh, I don't like those red cabinets, though. They, they need a decorator. Like, I don't like any of that furniture either. 
She has a contract set up for her sons. And on it, it says there will be no overnight guests that will be staying more than two days or they will be owing me rent. Simone is laying it down. She tells the oldest son, you have one year rent free. And then the other son, you have two years rent free. After that, pay up. <laughs> I am weak. Violations of these contract terms will result in your immediate eviction. And I don't know where you're going once you leave here. <laughs> I think this is actually very fair and a great solution Simone has presented to them. And I'm going to pause right quick. Now, this is what I love. Like, actual stories going on in the cast lives. Like, this is shitting all over Real Housewives of Atlanta right now. And I hate to compare the shows, but that's all we got. I review shows that's on the same network. I have to compare them. So next scene, we're with Toy and Eugene, and they're just discussing the upcoming trip. She's saying that she is inviting Quad, but Eugene thinks, well, you know, it's up to you. I don't think it's a good idea. And he also has to explain what a powder keg is to Toya, because I'm guessing she never heard that expression, because he called Quad a powder keg, and that's accurate. Toya, for some reason, is still expecting an apology or accountability out of Quad. I don't see that happening. Next scene is the day of the Napa trip. Uh, half the group is there. They're flying together. It is Simone, Toya, Heavenly, Sweet Tea, as well as uh, the friend Dove. I believe her name is Alicia. And then Toya said that Jackie and Phaedra are traveling together. And I guess it was Phaedra's job to invite Quad. Heavenly didn't do it. She expected Phaedra to. At this point, though, the ladies don't know if Quad is coming or not. So we found that this is Sweet Tea's first time in California, period. Like, she's like, what, 31, 32? Wow. Wow. I mean, well, <laughs> I'm trying to think of some, like, major cities I still haven't been to. I haven't been to Seattle. I haven't been to... Well, I feel like I've been to the, the major cities that count. <laughs> I'm trying to think, have I been to Phoenix before? I think I've driven through Arizona. I've never been to St. Louis or Detroit. Is that a major city? I, I think that counts. But yeah, the major cities that count, I've been to. No offense, that's no shade to, you know, y'all other folks. Oh, man. So I guess Simone brings up the wedding and then Heavenly says, well, it would have been nice to celebrate it. And Sweet Tea is like, you didn't even want the wedding to happen. So now they're going back and forth. But I don't understand why Heavenly is trying to give an age read to Sweet Tea. Like, okay, he's 54, 55. She's 30-something. I mean, she's 30-something. Like, you're already, like, almost middle age at that point. And saying that 54, 55 is old as dirt, come on now, Heavenly. Now, how old are you? Because you look 50. I hope you're not under 50. Let's ask Google. Dr. Heavenly is 53 years old. So you're saying that 54, 55 is old as dirt? So Toya tries to nip this in the bud and tells both ladies to own something. So Heavenly gives Sweet Tea a non-apology. And Sweet Tea says, well, you know, just be there for me. That's all I'm asking. I won't confide in you, but just be there for me. So they arrive at the destination. So it looks like they're staying at a winery, like, slash hotel. Like, when I went to Napa, we stayed at, like, a like a hotel hotel. And then we just went from vineyard to vineyard to vineyard. So everything is nice so far. Good job, Toya. So first, I want to say, you know, we've come a long way to the point where Jackie and Simone aren't sharing a room anymore. Jackie is closer to Heavenly now. And Simone is closer to Toya. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, at least they're still friends, but it's just sad to see. Anywho, they're running into a room problem because Toya didn't get quite a room because she wasn't sure if she was coming or not. So now they're trying to figure out whose room to put her in. Even Phaedra didn't want to share a room with Quad, so they put it on the new girl, the friend of, for her to share a room with Quad. So a little later, ladies go bike riding, then they have a spa day. Um, during that, Sweet Tea is telling him that she talked to Dr. G about what Heavenly said on the Sprinter about him being old as dirt and having worms. And they're like, why are you told him that? And she's like, well, that's his dentist. <laughs> Toya is gagged. She's like, really? Cuts her confessional. And she's like, I don't go to Heavenly for dental work. Eugene don't go to her. I'm shocked anybody goes to her. <laughs> Look, I always say Heavenly is excellent for the show. But watching the show... She is one mean-ass lady. 
So then next we see Quad arrive, and she's going to Toya's room where Sweet Tea and uh, Simone are. Um, I will say, Toya, you started out shading with Quad first. I didn't even know if you were coming or not. Phaedra didn't want to be in a room with you. Jackie said, fuck no. Now, come on. Come on. Like, you got to give us some leeway and actually be nice if you want to get it in return. So y'all just start off on a good foot already. But Toya does get Quad her own room, and Quad says, Now, Toya, is this in the basement? Did you go dig a hole and put my room in it? <laughs> is it even a king size? Now, <laughs> look, these two are just oil and water. And the way Toya looking at her, she's just holding her mule. So Quad leaves to get her room, but Lord, the tension. Like, these ladies do not like each other. And then when Quad leaves, like Simone tells her, you know, you start off with an attitude and you knew Quad was going to come in high energy. I mean, that's just how Quad is. But then Toya tries to call Simone out for smiling in Quad's face and talking behind her back. Simone says, I have my own issues with Quad, which I will deal with at dinner. And I'm just being cordial. I know how to be cordial. To Toya, however, she thought Simone was being fake. So next we see Dr. Jackie and Phaedra finally arrive. Now everyone thought that all three of them would be coming together, but it looks like Shady Fei Fei changed her flight so she wouldn't be flying with Quad. So then Toya asks, are you and Quad good? And you know Phaedra gonna lie because that's just what she does. Like she's a pathological liar. But the other ladies suspect that because of Quad's behavior at the resurrection party, she didn't make Phaedra look good and Phaedra feels some type of way about it. Also, I'm wondering, did Jackie and Phaedra have a camera crew with them? Like, they didn't document any of their trip getting there. I just thought that was strange. So next scene is later in the evening where all the ladies will be having an outside dinner. <laughs> we see them getting ready, and okay, sweet tea, I see you with the girls up. But then we see her take a whole shot of Crown before she leave. <laughs> Look, I get it. Okay, side note, I hate that Dr. Heavenly pointed it out. But Dr. Alicia, the, the friend Dove, she does look like Simone a lot. <laughs> so it looks like all the ladies are at dinner on time, except for Quad. So they're talking, and Dr. Jackie lets the ladies know that she'll be on Zoom with the VP of the United States, Kamala Harris. Jackie is that bitch. I'm telling y'all. Oh, and also what Jackie and the VP have in common are they're both AKAs. Ski wee. Oh, can I do that? I don't think I could do that. Sorry. So we see Phaedra arrive at the table, and I totally forgot that she's late too. But Quad still isn't there. You'd think if she was really trying to move forward with the lady, she would have showed up early to dinner. So Quad finally arrives, and the grimace on everyone's faces at the table. This is definitely her last hurrah with this group. So as soon as Kwa sits down, she does give Toya a compliment, congratulates her, says she's proud of her. But then, you know, it's still awkward at the table. So now Simone gets the conversation started about the elephant in the room. Like, do you still want to be around this group? And I hate that they have to talk in code and not break the fourth wall about, like, why you still want to be on this show with women you can't trust or feel support you. But yes, Quad is still playing the victim and saying that she felt the way she felt because she wasn't getting support from the other ladies. Simone calls her out though and says, you gotta stop with this. Like, where are you now with the group? So Quad's answer to that question is, it's a second chance for everybody and she's giving a clean slate and hopefully it's going both ways. So Quad says she doesn't have any emotional attachment to any of the ladies, but she's trying to get back to that. Interesting. I mean, basically she put herself on an island. And let's not forget, she put herself on an island twice. It's the second time she's done that with this group and just seemed like they're tired of it. And I can understand the other ladies' frustrations. Like, this isn't Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is Married to Medicine. Like, these ladies have a more genuine relationship. Like, most of these ladies, they still talk to each other when the show isn't airing. And some people can have their beefs and not speak to each other, but when you're not cool with nobody on the cast, like, I think that's a problem. At that point, if you haven't made the effort to establish any connections with nobody on the group, and they come to a point where they don't want to film with you anymore, then that's on you. And Quad didn't have no problem when they kicked Mariah out the group, so here we are. Ooh! <laughs> wow, okay, so Heavenly pipes up, and you know, she feels that Quad is using her because she just threw Phaedra 
under the bus. Saying that, well, you know, Phaedra told me that she's not going to bring you around the group anymore. So that's when you called me to get you to come on the trip. Then she said Phaedra changed her flight so she wouldn't have to fly in with her. So of course, production, we cut to a flashback of Phaedra lying because that's just what she does. Toya says she knew it. So now Phaedra finally speaks up because she's backed into a corner where she has to tell the truth. That's what you have to do with her. So then she tells Quad face to face that she said, well, I made it clear with you that I'm not going to be inviting you to stuff if this is going to be the energy. Heavenly tells Quad, don't use me because when Phaedra said she wasn't bringing you on the trip, that's when you called me. Before that, I didn't hear from you. <laughs> Heavenly then throws Jackie under the bus. She said, well, Jackie even told me, yeah, she's using your ass. Damn, I hate that this show needs Dr. Heavenly. I hate it, but I'll allow. Heavenly has lit the dynamite and just threw it in the middle of the table. She is now calling out Quad for what she said about Phaedra and how Phaedra be lying. She says that Phaedra told us that she never dated Gregory and Quad said that she actually did date Gregory. Oh man, with Gregory's current wife at the table. <laughs> <laughs> now this is television. I I'm glad I decided to review this first, y'all. Oh my God. Oh my God. So now we're getting the truth out of Quad since she's backed into a corner. She's like, yeah, Gregory told me that he dated you for a while, talking to Phaedra, but things went south when you tried to ask him for $4,000 a month. Finally, we got the smoke and mirrors down. So Phaedra, you can see the look on her face. She feels some type of way. So now she brings Sweet T into it and ask her like what Greg said. And then Sweet T says, well, Greg said y'all went on a date one time. It didn't work out. And that's it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not believing Phaedra. I, I would believe Quad over Phaedra. We cut to Phaedra's confessional. And she's like, my purse is $10,000. What I need with four? Well, I mean, this was way back then, Miss Parks. I think it checks out. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. But anyway, Heavenly Clock's back in, going at the quad, calling her a user. They're going back and forth. Quad is like, how you gonna call me a sister when you talk about me behind my back? Which is a good point. Heavenly is not to be trusted. I don't understand how anyone at that table is friends with Heavenly. So the credits are rolling, they going back and forth, cussing each other out. The screen fades to black and we're at a to be continued. Lord, I mean, this show is six for six. Like, I gotta give Dr. Demon her props. Like, she really set it off at that table. Wow, 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 wow. This is good. This is, this is like a dinner party from hell. So after this, thankfully, we get a preview for next week. And it really looks like this will be Quad's last episode. Damn. Sorry for ya. Anywho, y'all. Um, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Whose side are y'all on? Is anybody on Quad's side? Because I'm not. Sound off. Uh, with that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for Potomac. Bye.